Once you start your path to master observables, the chances are high that you already encountered a marble diagram on your way. The marble syntax is a very intuitive syntax to represent streams, and it's often used to visualize observable transformations. Look at this marble diagram right in front of us. We have a source observable that emits some values. In this example, we use the map operator to map all values, and the result can also be represented as a marble diagram. Those marble diagrams are not only a form of documentation, they can also be used to test our observables. From consulting various developers, I have seen that teams often take advantage of third-party library to apply marble testing. But since version 6, we can actually marble test without using a third-party library. We can marble test using the RxJS testing utils only. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. Let's start with an empty test. To marble test observables, we need the test scheduler from RxJS. So let's first declare a variable scheduler for the, our test scheduler. Next, we have to instantiate our scheduler. So let's add a before each hook. Inside this before each hook, we can then instantiate our new test scheduler. The constructor argument of the test scheduler expects a assert deep equal function. This function tells the test scheduler how to compare values. The assert deep equal is a callback that accepts an actual and an expected. In our case, we want to assert that the actual equals the expected. This assertion might change based on your actual testing framework. In our test, we are using chest. So that's everything that is needed for our test setup. We can now start using our test scheduler in our tests. So let's go ahead and add a new it block. Inside our test, we can now start to use our test scheduler. And the most important function on the test scheduler is the run method. The run method accepts a callback that is then called with run helpers. So we could do something like run helpers, which are of type run helpers and then write our test inside the function body. So what are run helpers? Run helpers are helpers that help us creating, managing or asserting observables during our tests. So the run helpers interface provides us with various methods. We have a cold and a hot method. Those cold and hot methods allow us to create a cold or a hot observable based on a given marble diagram. We then have some flush method that starts virtual time that is only needed in more advanced scenarios. And we have two very important methods, which are expect observable and expect subscriptions. Expect observable is the function that we will use to assert that an observable meets a marble diagram. And expect subscriptions is something that we can use to assert that an observable has the expected subscriptions. Do you remember the graphic that I showed you at the beginning of this video? This is basically our test case. We want to write a test with a source observable that emits three values, one, two, three, then uses the map operator to multiply each of those values by 10, which results in a resulting observable that emits the values 10, 20, 30. So let's start with the source observable. Our source observable is a cold observable. So let's create a source observable that uses the run helpers.cold method. So there is nothing wrong by directly using the run helpers here, but I personally prefer to use destructuring to get a hold of the cold method here instead of the hold run helpers object. So now that we destructured our cold method, let's call it with a marble diagram. As seen on the graphic, our marble diagram emits a value A, B, then there are a couple of ticks where nothing is emitted, and then the value C is emitted, and finally our diagram completes. So this is pretty descriptive and we can use the marble syntax directly in our test. At this point, A, B and C are just keys of values that are emitted, but there are no actual values mapped to it. So let's create some source values, which is an object with the actual values. So we have A1, B2 and C3. In order to apply them to our cold observable, we have to pass the source value as last argument to our cold method. 
So we now created a nice cold source observable. So let's go ahead and do the same for our expected observable. So for our expected observable, we use the exact same marble diagram since, since the values are emitted in sync, but we use different expected values. Instead of 1, 2, 3, we now use 10, 20, 30. Next, we will create our result string. As shown in the picture before, we want to apply a map operator on our source to create our result string. And the map operator will multiply each value by 10. Great, at this point, the only thing that is missing is the assertion. So we want to assert that the result stream equals our expected stream. When we previously checked the run helpers interface, we saw that the run helpers offer a expect observable method. So let's destructure this method as well. Once destructured, we can call it and we can pass our result stream. So we expect that our result stream equals our expected stream. So let's go ahead and run this test. We see that everything passes. But does it really mean that it works? But somebody once told me that you should also see a test fail at least once. <clears throat> so let's adjust the expected values and instead of 10, we expect that the first one would only be 1. If we rerun this test, we can see that it fails because on frame 0, we received a value of 1, but we expected a value of 10. So let's fix that again and change to 10 and our test will become green again. So since version 6 of RxJS, you don't anymore need a third-party library to test observables. You can directly use RxJS testing utils. This has a couple of advantages. You don't rely on any third-party library. You're always up to date with the sources and it also makes your dependencies cleaner. Furthermore, the marble syntax is a very great way of writing descriptive tests when it comes to testing observables. If you like this video, please follow me on Twitter or subscribe to this YouTube channel. See you next time.